Hey everyone, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop doing something a little different. Uh, actually, in my video yesterday of uh, my auction finds or my flea market finds, uh, I featured an Edison blue cylinder and I mentioned that it was that I was keeping it and that it was for uh, an Edison cylinder player. I actually had somebody write to me and, and ask about it, uh, one, wanting to know more. So I thought I would go ahead and show you uh, what the cylinder plays on. The big sort of uh, awkward box that you see in front of you is called an Edison Ambarola 50. And it's a cylinder player. Uh, cylinders play music. As you probably know, Edison did not invent the flat disc, but he did invent the cylinder. And these cylinder recordings um, did not catch on with the public. They were difficult to store. Um, I think they sounded better than discs, but the flat disc actually won the popularity and popularity contest and Excuse me. Edison was the only one that continued to make discs, uh, cylinders, into uh, the 1920s. This is called an Ambarola machine. You've heard of Victrola. Remember anything that had Ola on the end of it, like Crayola, Motorola, Victrola, Ambarola. That was a popular suffix of the day. Um, this particular machine, it's still a little temperamental. There's some work that I need to do on the cabinet, which is not rough, but it does have a few cosmetic issues. This is made of mahogany. It's difficult to see the mahogany because the old shellac has alligatored as old shellac does, like on old pianos, but um, once I clean this up, I'm not going to refinish it. I don't like refinishing things. I like them to be in original condition, but I can certainly certainly clean this up and get it to look better than it does. Uh, you might be wondering where is, well, when, I'll show you quickly. It's hard to do this with just one hand, and this is, this is pretty heavy. So I'm opening up the lid on it. These are manufactured, by the way, between 1916 and the, the late 20s. Um, and the horn is actually here on the inside. You've seen old machines with horns that stick out. This kind of a machine has, has the horn on the inside. So if we look inside, we see there is the tin horn. And as the uh, cylinder machine plays, the horn actually pivots back and forth because it's it's connected directly. How well you can uh, the motor is up there, which is kind of difficult to see. Um, there you can see the motor a little bit better. Uh, the flyball governor is up under here, and let me give it a little crank and let you see what it does um, without the cylinder being played on it. So it has two springs. I'm cranking it up now to put tension. Oops, let me turn it off. Uh, by the way, there's no electricity here. It's all acoustic, it's all mechanical. Nothing's plugged in. I can assure you of that. There's no amplification by electricity. All the acoustic principles. I'm gonna give it quite a crank here. And I will let you see that when I flip this switch here, that's the spring is now transferring its power to the governor, which is, you can't see, which is in here. Um, well, this, you can see the governor. Okay, let's turn it off. This is what's called a fly ball, get my finger out of there, a fly ball governor, similar to uh, anniversary clocks. And this governor was giving me a pain in the, but I did get it fixed. It's pretty quiet now. That's the feed screw underneath. Boy, is it dirty. Anyway, it's actually pulling the carriage across. This is called the mandrill, and this is what the cylinder will actually go on top of. And then the reproducer is right under here. 
you can't see very well, but there is a diamond stylus. And as I move this up and down, uh, the reproducer is moving up and down. And when I put the cylinder on, that diamond stylus is going to contact with the blue, make contact with the uh, cylinder, and it will play. You'll hear the music, which will come through this horn. So underneath we can see the gears are unraveling or unwinding. The feed screw is spinning, the carriage is moving across. Aren't all these technical terms exciting? <laughs> Look at all that dust and dirt. Well, this baby is, good grief, um, about 100 years old, uh, in fact. The serial number on this dates it to right about 1918, so it is 100 years old. All right, let's put this decorative grill back on. By the way, this grill would have had uh, a, a gold piece of grill cloth across the front. You wouldn't have been able to see into the horn like that, and I'll probably replace that. So I'm now going to take the cylinder, slide it on the mandrel like that, just push it on tightly and give this, a, oops, a few more cranks. Pardon my hand, <laughs> bear with me. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. I won't play the entire cylinder. It does play for four minutes. We'll just hear a little bit of it. And this, by the way, is called the Down Home Rag. And I'll have to tell you later who the performer is. So. What we do now is slide the reproducer back over, engage the motor, and we let the reproducer fall down in place and we'll have music. Ready? Give it just a second, let the feed screw pull it across. There we go. I promise any second now. Okay, so there you go, uh, home entertainment circa 1915. 
Uh, that goes on for four minutes, folks, uh, and all that screaming and hooting and howling, that's right there on the old cylinder. Uh, the down-home rag one-step. So it kind of makes you wonder what kind of equipment, recording equipment, reproducing equipment made today is going to be around a hundred years from now. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this old Edison Amarola player. And uh, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.